Hey everybody, and uh, I'm just going to do a quick tutorial here. Um, this is to show uh, something a little different in the way that I did something earlier. So the last time I did this tutorial, which was on opening a door with a trigger, um, I did this in, in level flow, and a couple people were requesting that I kind of redid it in, in unit flow. And I just did that, and I kind of did it a little more of an elegant way, and it works a little better, and um, it's just kind of a, a more sensible approach to doing uh, the door triggers. So I just thought you guys might like to see this, um, and I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of how it kind of works. Sorry, my phone is buzzing, and I'm just doing this quickly, so I'm not going to edit or anything. I'm just going to keep going. Um, so, But I am going to move my phone off of my desk so it doesn't continue to annoy me. But, um, yeah, okay, so here we have two doors. They're both placed. In fact, I'll just show you that I'm going to place them all separately. So without doing anything in level flow, here's the level flow, and it's 100% blank. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and grab my door with trigger, and I'm going to place it, and I'm going to place it, and I'm going to place it. And we should see now that if I hit play, um, we should be able to hit F2, and then walk up to each of the doors. They'll play. And um, now I actually collide with the door, which is different than the way it happened before. I can walk through the door sill, and then when it's um, closed, if I would have, I don't even know if I can actually do it, but the, the, the actual door collision object is moving with it, um, which was something that didn't work the way I had done it the last time. Um, and that's a technical reason, which I can explain at some point, but for now I'm not going to worry about it too much because it's really not that relevant. To do it this way is the smarter, better way. And as you can see, each of these doors are reacting their own way. And um, something someone else pointed out was the last time the, the doors didn't kind of correct themselves. If I kind of walked up close and then walked away, it didn't really do the right thing. So this kind of tries to fix that um, by using blend time. And I can, I can kind of futz with that, and we'll get into that when I show you how I did this. Um, but yeah, so now we have you know, one door that can just be placed in any number of times, and you will always get um, the same result from the door. So that's kind of a neat little, neat little thing, and it works pretty good. And um, yeah, so let me show you how I did it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over into Maya, and I'm just going to show you how I set up the door. So I did it a little differently also. Um, what I did in here was I basically just took the door um, and I got rid of all the bones. So this isn't a bone structure anymore. This is just um, kind of just using keyframes. And uh, if you select each of the pieces, you'll see that there are, uh, let me go into the outliner really quick. So um, yeah, modeling and PK common and outliner. Okay, so here's my outliner. And here's my door, and all I did was I nested everything. So I've got this this root uh, thing called door, which is kind of containing all the elements that move. Um, and then I created, and I kind of wanted to fix this anyway, so I'm going to go door glass. Okay, so uh, it had, had mesh on there for some reason. Um, so I have door glass, I have the door handle, which is also here, the door body, which is also here, and the uh, handle back plate, which is the little brass pieces behind the door handle. And I don't have any bones controlling this, I'm just simply keyframing each part. So if I were to grab the door, you'll see that I've got my, my keyframes outlined here. And all this is doing is rotating the door, right? And then if I were to grab the handle, um, the handle is moving independently. But because they're nested, um, the, the door handle is going to move with whatever the rotation of the transformation of the door does. So I've kind of got basically a simple hierarchy that controls my door. So, you know, if I grab the door and rotate it, you know, everything kind of moves with it. Um, I'm just going to undo that. And if I grab the handles, I can rotate the handles independently. And, you know, even if I were to move the door after that, the handles will stay in whatever rotation position I had done. Um, pretty pretty basic stuff, but the, that's the idea, right? So um, that's all I did, uh, nothing special, and um, I just keyframed it all and, and made it work, right? So very simple stuff, nothing complicated. Uh, the only other thing that I did in comparison to the original one was I added a trigger in the actual object, okay? So this is its own, uh, just a square unit that I just you know placed in here, and it's separated from everything else. It doesn't have to be, but I, I did, uh, so it doesn't move. 
Okay, if I wanted the trigger to move, then I would just move it with, you know, within the door, or I could rotate it, or whatever I wanted to do. Normally, you don't want the trigger to move because the trigger is kind of a static thing you walk into. So I left that separated. Okay, um, I also left the the door sills out of the equation more or less, like they're separated out also, and that's really it. Um, and then in the uh, animation exporter or the the game exporter. So if I go into file game exporter, all I did was just kind of leave everything basically the same. I actually didn't change anything in here. Um, but as you can see, I have from frame 1 to 70 as the door part being opened, and I have from 70 to 75 to 100 uh, being the door closing. Do I actually want that? I think it is, yeah. So 0 to 70 is the door opening, and I probably don't want that. Yeah, I don't. I want this to be 70, so I'm going to correct that. So 70 to 100 is going to be uh, my door closing, right? And I'm just going to go ahead and hit export. And as you can see, I've already got my directory set up, so I'm, I'm sure you guys can figure that out. Uh, you just set up your path and set it with the name that you want and hit export, right? And it's going to say, do I want to overwrite my old one? And I'm going to say yes, because I had some changes that I made. Okay, so there we go. And uh, let's go into Stingray, and I'm just going to show you what we have to do in here. So... Um, this is pretty straightforward, so I'm just going to redo it all. So I'm just going to go in here and get rid of these models so that I don't have a problem. Um, I'm going to go right click, show an explorer, and I'm just going to wipe out all this stuff in here. Okay? So now I have a nice blank folder and where, where we want to be, right? which is nowhere. Um, so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to import, and I'm going to grab that door with trigger that I created. I'm going to hit open. And I'm just going to make sure that I have animation selected. It may be checked off, so make sure that it's checked on. Okay. Everything else leave alone and hit import. And if it imports correctly, you'll see that you have door with uh, trigger, uh, closed door, and door with trigger, open door. Those are the two animations that we set in Maya under the game exporter, right? Game exporter. Okay. And in here, you'll see that we have open door and closed door. So those directly relate to open door and closed door, or closed door and open door, right? Um, just one thing I want to just reiterate, so in here, you have to make sure that you set, well, you don't have to, but I, I like to do it. Um, I save it to one single file, so for this, to, if you're following along, you have to make sure you use the single file. You could do multiple clips, which would work just as well, but it's a little bit more of a, a file mess, so I like to do it all as one file. Um, but you can do it either way. Um, both ways will work, but this is the way I'm teaching you now, so do it with a single file. Okay, so that's really it. And once that's done, um, so we're back in Stingray again. Uh, we've got it all imported properly, now we just have to code it up so that it'll work. Alright, so let's double click on the door with trigger and open up the unit editor. Now, once we're in the unit editor, uh, there's a couple things we're going to want to do. The first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that this guy is not visible. Okay, so grab the trigger, and we're going to go ahead and say make it not visible and do not cast shadows. And we're going to go ahead and create a physics actor. And we want to set that physics actor to the shape template of a character trigger. Okay, once it's set to character trigger, this guy is pretty much done. Um, then what we're going to want to do is go to the door sills, and we're just going to create a physics actor again. So create physics actor. And this is going to let you not walk through the door sill, right? So that's good. Uh, we don't want to walk through door sills, so we're just going to leave that one alone. Static and mesh is okay, and we're good. Um, the next one we're going to want to grab is the glass and the body, okay? So those are the two parts that move, and we're going to go create physics actors. And once we do that, we're just going to want to make sure that we do two things in here. The actor template has to be keyframed, because it is a keyframed animation. And for the shape template, we want to leave that alone, actually. Okay, so this is that's all we have to do in here. All right, so that's done now. And that pretty much does everything we wanted to do. Um, I just want to make sure door sills is default, trigger is default. Uh, yeah, trigger is uh, character trigger, and we're good. Okay, so that's really all we had to do in there. Um, was there anything else? The handles we don't care about. They're too small to be making a physics actor for. Um, so we should be good. Yeah, the handle and the handle backplate, don't even worry about those, because, again, they're just too small and insignificant. There's no reason to make a physics actor for those objects. Okay, so uh, we're good. So now that we have that, we just have to kind of program it up. So let's go into unit flow, and the first thing we're going to need is a event, and the event is going to be a physics trigger. Okay, so let's get that guy on screen, and then we're going to want to go animation, and animation, animation clip play and res uh animation clip reset and play so grab that one and we're going to want another one so we're going to go animation animation clip reset and play so we have two of them 
let's just go ahead and grab our two animation clips. So we're going to go animation, and we want to grab the uh, door trigger open, and that's that. And for this one, we want to say close. Okay, so there we go. So I like to open these out so you can actually see the entire name. Um, that's just me. You can leave them closed if you like. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go when we enter that trigger, we want to hit play, and when we leave that trigger, we want to hit play. Because this one's going to play the closed door animation, this one's going to play the open door animation. Alright, good. So the only other thing we have to do is tell it what trigger we're going to want to use, or what actor we want to use for the triggering of the, um, of the event, and we want to make sure that it's named exactly as this. So we're just going to type in here, trigger. And that's that. So that should do it. We're going to go ahead and hit File, Save, and we should be done. So let's give this a test to Rooney and see how she goes. So Save, and let me grab this guy and place it on the stage. And we can place a couple of them. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Play. So now when we hit Play, we should find if we hit F2, you have to hit F2 or it won't work. Um, when we walk up to it, we get nothing. Okay, so let's see what we did wrong. So let's go back into the trigger. I must have missed something. I'm not sure what. What did I do wrong? Uh, trigger. Character trigger. It's a mesh. We might want to set this to box just to make it a little safer. Let's test that. Oftentimes, uh, things like to just use simple boxes. And I always find testing with those sometimes can make all the difference, and it did here. Yep, so we had to make sure that that actor template was a box. Now, as you can see, I don't have that blend time being used, so we're getting that snapping effect, right? So it just pops, right? We don't, we don't really want to pop. We would rather it be a little bit smoother than that. And, oh, that was another problem that I made. Okay, so there's two more things we have to do. Let's go into the door with trigger. And this is kind of good because you get to see... Um, you know, what could happen and how to fix it. So let's go into unit flow. And the first thing we're going to want to do is add a little bit of blend time. I find very small blend times to be better. So let's try 0.2. And let's try the blend time on this guy as 0.2. Okay. So what that's going to do is it's going to try to blend the two animations. Now this isn't perfect, but it's a good, it's a good, you know, it works. It's, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, there are better ways to handle this, and you can go ahead and experiment with lots of different techniques. Um, you could use, uh, you know, the um, the state machine, but uh, that's much more complicated. And for something like a door, you know, we just want it to look decent, and it, you know, it has to work pretty good. Um, but there are more complicated ways of doing this. This is kind of the easy way. So let's just do that for now. Um, we're going to hit save to make sure that our blend times are saved. And the last thing we want to do is make sure that these loops are set to false, okay? Because we really don't want them to loop. So let's just set these guys to false, and that should pretty much do what we're looking to do here. So let's close this, and let's hit play, and see what we got. And now we should find that the doors are blending nicely. And they do, see? So now it doesn't snap anymore, it just kind of fixes itself. Now, again, it's not perfect, because as you can see, it kind of speeds up and closes the door again, but for all intents and purposes, that's going to be pretty much okay. You know, I, I wouldn't consider that as a major problem at this point. Um, and as you can also see, we walk into the door and we collide with the door, which is nice. And if we walk through the door, we walk through the door. So the, the, the physics mover is actually getting out of our way, and um, everything is working just as we would have expected. And again, we just place that object several times with no level flow and all the doors react exactly the same. So that's a, a really nice feature because that's what the, kind of the benefit of unit flow is, is that uh, it kind of has that ability to, to do these um, very modular uh, units. So, uh, so that's that, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm sorry it took me so long to get this out there. Uh, I just had a lot of stuff on my plate, and I'm doing the best I can to keep everybody happy here. So, yeah, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you learned from it, and I uh, hope you keep using Stingray, because it's an awesome tool, and I love it, and I hope that everybody else does too. So, yeah, okay, bye-bye for now. Have a nice one.